Welcome to the Leave Request Application Extended tutorial. In this tutorial, we will explain how to build a little bit more advanced K2 solution by extending the basic version of the Leave Request Approval application. As you move through this tutorial, we will provide more advanced learning in the components of data, forms, and workflows. Keep in mind, we have designed this tutorial for users new to K2 or with very little K2 experience. We are also taking the assumption in this lesson that you have already completed the build-out tutorial of the basic version of the Leave Request application. If you have not completed that build yet, it is recommended that you go back and work through it first as we build upon the knowledge and elements that are created in that tutorial. However, you do have the option to download the solution files from the documentation page of that tutorial if you feel comfortable with the basics of K2 smart forms and workflow design. You should recall that K2 applications consist of four main components, data, forms, workflows, and reports. As with the tutorial for the basic version of the Leave Request application build, we will only be focusing on the data, forms, and workflow aspects for now. Again, assuming that you've worked through the basic tutorial already, you should be familiar with those components and what they mean to the K2 platform and the Leave Request application. Plan on spending roughly 60 minutes to run through this tutorial, however, it may be a bit longer if you want to take your time and pause here and there to absorb the information. Let's go ahead and jump right into the design of the enhancements we want to make to the Leave Request application. In the basic tutorial, we recommended starting with a design diagram to lay out the flow of our process. In the extended tutorial, we are again using a logical flow diagram to represent the various steps and actors in the workflow with some extensions. The drawing here shows an updated version of the Leave Request workflow. Our users wanted us to add in a rework loop so that the approver can send the request back to the originator for a rework and fix any issues rather than just outright rejecting the request. This rework loop can go as many times as needed until a request is approved, rejected, or canceled. Also notice we are adding some additional steps in the workflow to send email notifications to the requester to let that person know their request has been approved or rejected. Also, one of the new concepts we will address in this course is adding an escalation to the manager approval step to remind the approver and originator to review the request if it is not approved within two days before the start date of the leave request. We certainly don't want to come down to two days before a holiday or a vacation to not have it approved by management. Let's take a look now at the changes to our data design. The first change requested is to provide a field where the approver can capture comments so that the requester knows why the request was sent back for rework or rejected. To do this, we will edit the existing Leave Request Smart Box Smart Object and add an additional data field called Approver Comments, which will be a memo field. I'll show you what that will look like on the updated form here in a few seconds. You may recall that Smart Objects can also interact with other systems. In review, smart objects are essentially a middle layer or connector that allows consumers of data such as forms and workflows to interact with providers of data such as SQL databases, Active Directory, or SharePoint amongst others. In this version of the application, we want to leverage this power by creating a smart object which retrieves data from an Azure SQL database that resides out in the cloud. The image here shows how we will retrieve data from this external SQL database and expose it as a smart object. We will basically wire it up the same way we would an internal SQL Server database by setting up a SQL Server service instance and creating the smart object off of that instance with the desired methods and properties we need for our application. We will use this data on the smart form to populate the leave type dropdown lists with values that the requester can select from for available leave types. Now, a quick note before we move on. The integration data sources used in this application, mainly the Azure SQL database that will provide the leave type data, is intended only for tutorial and demonstration purposes. It is not intended for use in production applications and it will not be supported or guaranteed by K2. The SQL database used for this tutorial runs on SQL Azure. Connecting to this database will require an open port of 1433 in your firewall, so you may need to work with your network administrator to configure your firewall if you are sitting in a firewall-protected environment. 
Or alternatively, you can install the database in a local SQL environment using SQL scripts provided from help.k2.com. You can reference links to all of this information from the tutorial documentation of the Leave Request Extended Guide, which will have the links to knowledge base articles and the database scripts there. If you do want to set up the database locally, please contact your SQL database administrator if you need help running the data scripts. Let's round out this discussion by looking at our form updates. We will essentially do three things visibly to accommodate our changes to the application and workflow design. We will wire up the leave type dropdown list to pull us data from the leave type smart object we just reviewed so that values provided to users here can be managed without having to update a hard-coded list in the form. We will also remove the request status field from the item view since we already have this field showing down in the list view in a much more intuitive fashion for each request out there. We will also add in the approver comments to handle a manager or approver's comments if they need to send the request back for rework. Behind the scenes, we will make some changes to the rules and actions driving the behavior of the form to improve flow and usability for our users. That pretty much sums up the changes we will be making to the application. The goal here is to drop you in deeper with the lifecycle management tasks involved in designing, building, and managing your K2 applications. We hope you enjoyed this design layout discussion of the extended version of the Leave Request application. Feel free to move on to the build video when you're ready.